I found Tom, probably after the 80th person who came in for the part of Scott. And as soon as he came in for the part, he, he started the lines and I knew, I just didn't think he'd suited the part of Scott. And I asked him if he'd mind to go learn lines for Sid and have a play around with Sid. Did the line of Sid, I really liked him. Gave him a little bit of direction, really liked him. That was it. Scott had, had one or two people, I think, from that day that he was really, really impressed with and Tom was one of them. And they invited him actually back for an actual audition. And that's when I first got a chance to meet, meet um, Tom and, and, and his acting style. He came back on the weekend, Sid saw him and we, we signed Tom up. I remember at the time, it felt very surreal that this guy was, was gonna play this role. Inevitably, it was the start of the journey that, that's probably gonna stick with me for the rest of my life, that this guy played my character in this film and I guess me and Tom will always have that connection. Scott's part was a little bit more frustrating because Scott's character, I think, you know, there's some fantastic actors out there, but I think Scott's character, they need a little bit of Scott in them. They need, they need to kind of look at the world a little bit differently. You know, Scott doesn't have the same, Scott, the character Scott doesn't have the same prejudice kind of we see. When we see a chair or a table, we go, a chair's for sitting on, a table's for doing your work on or eating on, where Scott just doesn't see it like that. He sees a chair and he can lift it up or get underneath it or jump on a table. So I needed the person who was playing the character, um, at Scott's character, kind of look at the world a little bit like that. Kind of go, well, it's not all what it is, we're not what we've been told it is. And as soon as I saw the two or three minute showreel of Richard, I don't know what I saw in it, but I felt something in that showreel. And it was kind of done on a dodgy phone, dodgy iPhone and poor lighting, I couldn't really see him. I knew instantly. As soon as I saw it, I was like, that's him. The way he touched his face and his eyes and kind of moved his head around, I knew, I just knew. I rang Richard up, he was really shy and quiet. He's quite a quiet and shy guy when you first meet him anyway. I said, can I come and meet you? Um, he said, yeah, sure, but it's seven o'clock at night now in London. So I said, right, I'll be there tomorrow morning. I'll meet you in Covent Garden. I didn't know what he looked like or anything, so I expected this kind of old man. Yeah, when I saw him, he was a young guy with his headphones on. So we met in Covent Garden. I was with him 20 or 30 minutes. Boom. And I just said, have you got the part? I think meeting this person, knowing there's a project involved and he's come all the way to see me, I was probably trying to play it cool, but also just like uh, very excitable. And obviously Scott's an excitable guy himself, you know, so. He said, don't you want to see me act? I said, oh, sure. I, I think he stood up in the coffee shop and did a little bit of Shakespeare in this coffee shop and everyone stood still watching this crazy guy. I found him quite a strange kind of character. And that's probably why I pretty much was really into doing the, the project the way he observed people and saw in between the cracks, you know, wasn't really a materialistic kind of guy. He just, he would see different things in other people that in similar ways that, that I kind of do really. So I think after just speaking for like the first half an hour, I was like, okay, this, this guy's clearly a bit different in his mind, just how he sees the world. And, you know, I can relate to that myself. So then I was like, okay, this is probably a guy I would like to work with just for that aspect, you know, he just gets it. I just knew, I knew this was the guy. Just from the conversation, we just spoke and we, it was, it was a fantastic meeting. Left the meeting, rang Sid back up, said, Sid, I found Scott. I'm like, you know what, you found Scott, you asked Scott. <laughs> I was literally, I was so busy with what I was doing, I didn't have a clue what I was on about. And he went, no, no, I'm, I'm with, I'm, I've just met up with this guy and, you know, he's, he's a Scott. So I kind of like, well, how we come to that conclusion, you know, and what do you mean you found him, you must, you know, Quite a bit of a jump from just getting off a train and going to found Scott. Like I said, I haven't seen him perform it, but I'm inviting him up this weekend. I knew how strict Scott was about who he wasn't going to use. You know, there was people who I'd seen who were fantastic actors, but Scott was like, no, they're just not the right, right person for us. So for Scott's intuition to go, I found this guy without having known that he'd not seen him act, I was very, very excited straight away to know that, wow, this must be someone really special for Scott to, to say this. And he's like on the phone to me, can you get Tom? Tom to come over as well because I thought it'd be really cool. He's saying it'd be really cool to see these two, two guys come together. And my first reaction was really kind of going back to this thing as you know, can I act or whatever? He's going, yeah, yeah, he can act, he can act. He's fine, he's brilliant. Can you get Tom? So I ring up. Tom could come up, get Richard up. We got Richard up because it's very important that there's chemistry between the two boys. Because if there's no chemistry, you can't do this. You know, you can't do the roles like Scott and Sid in a movie. Richard's on his way up train. I go pick him up. Well excited to see him. He comes off the train, and honestly, you could you 
can imagine there was like steam coming off the train. It was like a movie scene itself. <laughs> I saw this guy come off, like some sort of James Dean moment. It just looked famous straight away. They met each other. We went to a local coffee shop in town. We had a cappuccino, mucking around there, a bit of a chat. My aim was at first just to bond, not to really put pressure on the guys. It was to take pressure off the guys. After we had a cappuccino, a cup of coffee, we walked back in, walked back to my apartment, which was about 10 minutes away from the coffee shop. I could see Richard relaxing a little bit more. He was very nervy compared to Tom. Tom, Tom's a true professional, you know, he's kind of a Mr. Pink character. He turns up, he does his job, he's in for it. Richard, he kind of slowly comes out of his shell until he's kind of this wild firework. And it was taking him time to come out. We got back to the apartment, there were two or three friends there. We kind of straight away wanted to see, right, come on, let's see these guys perform. And I was really itching to sort of, you know, these guys are prepared for these guys to come up. Like, I want to see this, this happen. It was, it was like coming to my own play, it was, it was pretty cool. Sid were dying to see what Richard were like. So Sid sits in his chair, really excited. Tom gets up, Richard gets up. They do two, three minutes of the scene. I let it go to, through to the end and Richard was just fucking terrible. It was kind of like, it was embarrassing to the point where everyone in the room was like, oh my God, is this guy joking? He just, he can't, he couldn't act. I was looking at him and I was like, I, like, I just, I was in disbelief. I was like, this, is, I was like, I can't understand why Scott said that this is Scott. He's, He's terrible. I just couldn't gauge everyone, you know. I didn't really know what was going on with the project. I was like, okay, so am I doing this? Am I not doing this? You know, I don't really know what's going on, like, at all. Am I just coming up and then you're never going to speak to me again? So I think I was just a bit on edge, like, yeah, what is all this? Scott picked up on it straight away. He went downstairs with Richard and gave him a, you know, a bit of a chat and whatever. I don't know what happened. I was just kind of like, looking around the room and with a bit of disbelief and trying to process this, this, this whole um, sort of audition. I kind of pulled Richard to one side and said, right, this time we're going to go for it. Kind of pretending that, oh, we're just doing a read through there. And he went, yeah, yeah, I'm ready for it. We did it again. It was terrible again. And at this point, I'm like, for fuck's sake, in my head, I'm going, you're wasting my time. I've just paid for you all to come up. What, you know, I must have probably given him a bit of a, you're taking their fucking piss sort of look. Sid came up to me and said, this guy's a, what is this guy? Where have you got him from? Why have you brought him here? Why are you wasting our time? You know, I paid for them both to come up. We've paid for this weekend sort of thing. You know, it's five, six hundred quid. Just gone. And I'm like, right, okay, let me have a chat. I took Richard outside. He had a beer and a cigarette. I'm chatting away with Richard saying, you know, what the fuck's up? <laughs> why, why aren't you performing? And he goes, oh, Sid's scaring the shit out of me. <laughs> And I feel, like I, I feel like I'm not gonna get the part. What's up with him? I said, relax, he's just got an intense look. Just go up there and have fun. I said, tell you what, you're gonna do one more. I guarantee you, I shook, I shook his hand. You've got the part. Said, Don't worry, just go have fun. He went, oh great. He went upstairs and boom, smacked out of the ballpark. Look, gives me goose pimples. If I don't trust the people around me, it's like I don't really want to give them uh, the truth, you know? And I think maybe at the time I just, I didn't trust Scott, Sid, the other people, just because I didn't know what this was. But then when Scott was like, just looked at me and he was like, just chill out, do what you know you can do. Because we all know you can do it. So why are you pretending like you can't? And that kind of just then, you know, kind of flipped and I was like, okay, yeah, cool. No worries and did it and that was it. It just nails it. I don't know what Scott said, but whatever he said, it must have worked. And you saw this transition from this guy who, who couldn't act, or not couldn't act, but did this version, and then he did this totally different version. It was just a, an amazing transformation. I could see what obviously he, he saw in him. It was almost like it had, it had been part of the act that he was going to do this and draw me along on this, just to sort of see how I was. I felt like I was on that candid camera to see what my response was going to be like. Sid came up and went, oh, we got a guy. We had a great kind of 48 hours, we've got Jacob who played uh, Nigel Ball in the film. We're mucking around with different scenes in the film. I just uh, had 48 hours of drinking and playing different parts and talking about movies. There was a lot of good banter and I remember that weekend just feeling like not only had we found the two actors, but I, I'd, I'd we'd, I felt like straight away there was this bond with all of us and we were, you could tell that we were going to spend a lot of time with these guys and they were going to be a really important part of my life and I was really pleased that you know we'd found, we'd found Scott and Sid.